the commission attaches great importance to eliminating any obstacle restricting the right to free movement and residence and we will continue to work with member states to make sure that the directive is applied correctly. You know that the commission has taken guidelines for the better transposition of the directive. The guidelines are of July 2009. So in this moment we are looking at the way member states are applying those guidelines in practical uh, terms. The Commission welcomes the report on homophobia and discrimination on grounds of sexual orientation issued by the Fundamental Rights Agency. This report, it has by the way been uh, elaborated because the Parliament has asked for it, provides comprehensive and important data on the human rights of gays, lesbians, bisexuals, transsexuals and transgender persons. These data are needed and I have asked the uh, agency uh, to deepen the research in this area as, by the way, I have declared publicly uh, on 18th of May last on the celebration of the Day Against Homophobia because we need to know what is going on in practice in the member states. And the forthcoming annual report on the application of the Charter, it's in November, I think, look at my stuff, yes, in November, um, this will deal with the discrimination and with the homophobia, and you can count on my determination to act within the framework of the powers that the Treaty has entrusted upon the Commission. You do understand that this is for some member states a very political, social, delicate question. Because the way of looking at things is not the same all over Europe. But the fact that more and more countries now, more and more member states, are all recognizing or applying uh, marriages, um, irrespective of the social orientation of the partners, is for me a very good sign. So we have to advance step by step. We have also on the basis, most of all on our guidelines, bring the member states to accepting those rules. For many it is very new, it is very unusual, for some it is very shocking. And we have to advance cautiously because what we do not want, and I think that all those who have spoken here out of their experience, out of their heart, uh, do also understand that. Uh, we do not want to be too harsh and when I say this, I do not speak about the values, the basic values. They are there, they are not under question. But I think we have to bring step by step the resistant member states into accepting the general rules because what we do not want is to have populations who start to be opposite uh, to the same-sex marriages, the recognition of the rights and the non-discrimination. So having said that, uh, let's see in the report on the details of how in the different member states, in different regions of member states, things are applied. And having said that, I do not want to have any doubts about the fundamentals about the rights of free movement, irrespective of any sexual orientation, of any ethical, ethnical basis, and this we are going to apply, step by step. So we are going to come back to this. I thank you for the 
very personal insight some of the members have given to me. Um, it is very important for me to, to understand also the sensitivity of this matter, which is not only a matter of principle, which is also a matter of human beings uh, living their personal lives. So thank you for this and I think that together we will manage to change this in the next coming months and years. Grazie commissario, iniziamo il dibattito con gli oratori a nome dei gruppi politici per il gruppo del Partito Popolare Europeo, l'onorevole Iacolino per due minuti. Grazie signora Presidente, signora Commissario, ho ascoltato con attenzione coloro i quali sono intervenuti con riferimento a un tema, ad una questione che ha sicuramente una sua peculiarità e una sua specificità, contrariamente a quanto è accaduto poco fa quando ci siamo soffermati lungamente su un tema troppo dibattuto e di poca concretezza, quello sulla libertà di espressione in Europa, questo è un tema assolutamente attuale e concreto. Io ricordo che qualche tempo fa, in sede di approvazione della risoluzione sul programma di Stoccolma, un emendamento con caratteristiche sostanzialmente analoghe a quello, al contenuto dell'interrogazione di cui odiernamente parliamo è stato non approvato in sede di commissione, probabilmente perché proprio con riferimento testuale, testuale alle parole che vi sono in quella risoluzione e cioè che va rispettata l'identità e la sensibilità nazionale di ciascun Stato membro, probabilmente la consapevolezza della commissione era quella che probabilmente ha informato di recente anche la Corte di Giustizia europea, la quale ha affermato con riferimento a un caso specifico che negare le nozze alle coppie dello stesso sesso non è una violazione di un diritto. Io sono dell'avviso che vadano garantite alcune posizioni fondamentali perché ciò che attiene alla sfera intima e personale di una persona va infatti rispettato, ma nel contempo non posso non tenere in debito conto le parole poc'anzi riferite dalla commissaria signora Reding, cioè che vi vuole, ci vuole un passaggio graduale fatto di piccoli passi concreti verso un riconoscimento che nel tempo potrà essere realizzato. Molte cose sono state compiute, ma nel contempo non si può non tenere conto di un concetto di famiglia che per noi è quella di una famiglia naturale, con un uomo e una donna e la procreazione dei figli, rispetto ad un altro modello che noi evidentemente teniamo in debito conto, ma non è quello al quale fa riferimento ancora oggi in prevalenza la comunità europea. Grazie. Grazie. Per il gruppo dell'Alleanza Progressista di Socialisti e Democratici, l'onorevole Flascicova Benova per due minuti. Prego. Ďakujem veľmi pekne, pani predsedajúca, pani komisárka. Veľmi pozorne som počúvala váš prejav a chcela by som skutočne oceniť, ako citlivo ste volili slova. A možno len pre objasnenie kolegovi Jakolinovi. My tu teraz nehovoríme o tom, že Európsky parlament chce zavádzať a prikazovať národným štátom zavádzanie registrovaných partnerstiev. Hovoríme tu teraz celkom o inej téme. Hovoríme o tolerancii a o tom, že väčšina hostiteľských členských štátov neuznáva manželstva ani registrované partnerstva, ktoré zákonne a to zdôrazňujem zákonne, uzatvorili občania rovňak, rovnakého pohľavia. Tým podľa všetkého ale dochádza k porušovaniu smernice o práve na voľný pohyb. Na prvý pohľad sa jedná o technicko-právny problém, pretože smernica definuje člena rodiny, občana Európskej únie ako manžela, manželku, respektíve partnera, partnerku, s ktorým občan uzatvoril registrované partnerstvo. Prvým problémom je, že voľnosť pohybu registrovaných partnerov je daná tým, či legislatíva hostiteľského štátu považuje registrované partnerstvo za ekvivalent manželstva. Ak nie, smernica sa nevykonáva v plnej miere a tým sú obmedzené aj ich elementárne ľudské práva. Druhým problémom je, že neexistuje zhoda v tom, či termín manžel, manželka, respektíve partner, partnerka zahrňa aj partnerov rovnakého pohľavia. Napriek snahe Európskeho parlamentu, komisia v Smernici túto nejasnosť nevyriešila. A tu sa dostávame vlastne k pointe. To, čo sa javí ako problém právnicko-administratívneho charakteru, je, ako ste aj vy sama podotkli, v skutočnosti otázka politickej vôle. 
chcela by som veriť že komisia si správne vysvetlí signál ktorý jasne vysielajú viaceré politické frakcie pretože šancu pri akčnom pláne na implementáciu štokholmského programu sme už premeškali, respektíve komisia premeškala, ale ja dúfam, že pri najbližšej príležitosti spraví kroky nevyhnutné na odstránenie všetkých možných nejasností, ktoré momentálne ústia do diskriminácie a nenaplňania zmyslu európskej ľudskoprávnej legislatívy. Ďakujem pekne. Grazie per il gruppo Alde, l'onorevole Ladford per 2 minuti e 30. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I think some of the same features uh, are in this debate as in our earlier debate today on the expulsion of the Roma from France and previously from Italy. We have splendid principles in the treaties and legal instruments of the EU, non-discrimination, equality, rights of minorities, human dignity, the right to family life and the right of free movement. But their implementation in the member states leaves much to be desired and falls short of these values and commitments. And the problem is that the Commission, which is the watchdog and guardian of the treaty, all too often hesitates to pursue member states for even quite serious and very serious breaches. Now, I'm privileged to represent London and therefore, I would say, one of the most progressive regions in Europe when it comes to gay rights. I'm not claiming my city or even my country are free of homophobic prejudice or discrimination. We don't yet have gay marriage. But we have made a lot of progress. But when my con constituents with civil partnerships travel or move abroad within the EU, they lose their rights and legal status, as others have mentioned. Um, inheritance, tax, social benefits, even the right to be treated as a partner are lost. But the whole program in an area that I work a lot in, which is European criminal justice is rooted in the principle of cross-border mutual recognition, recognizing and implementing legal decisions made in other EU member states. So why not legal decisions on partnership or marriage, which is even more precisely than the area of jam and widgets that my friend Sophie was talking about. I therefore don't agree with Vice President Reading with respect that the free movement directive does not need amending. It does need amending to remove the semi-discretion that member states have to discriminate against couples uh, where uh, they are same-sex partners or spouses moving from another member state. It therefore seems to me that you know, we need action from the Commission. We've got to a sort of critical mass. Even if one accepts this argument, you've got to wait for social change. We have a critical mass of member states which legally recognise same-sex couples. It is time to introduce uniform treatment of those same-sex partners moving to another European country. And in fact, there's a recent interesting judgment of the European Court of Human Rights which suggested it might not be too long before that court, the Court of the Council of Europe, insists that marriage be open to same-sex couples. It would be richly ironic if the EU had failed to act and then we find ourselves upstaged by the Council of Europe when we claim to be the gold standard in our own self-definition compared to the Council of Europe. Grazie per il gruppo verde, l'onorevole Lunacek per un minuto e trenta. Yes, Mrs. Vice President of the Commission, I, I truly believe every word that you have said here and that you personally believe in having to implement the rights of movement of every person, of every European citizen, be they gay, lesbian, heterosexual or whatever, be they married or registered partnership, whatever. The, the problem I encounter and that all of us who have been speaking here have, or most of us at least, is that when you say we need to go forward step by step, or we need to sort of make member states understand and convince them and work against prejudice. I, I know that's the case, but I think in all of EU countries, citizens are a lot further than their governments. And let me tell you the experience of the Warsaw Euro Pride this year, where I was present, and walked with around 20,000 people, lesbian, gay, heterosexual, bisexual, transgender, through the main streets of Warsaw, with uh, extremist demonstrators being pushed away to the margins where they belong by police and lots of heterosexual citizens, all the women with their dogs watching from the, uh, from the buildings greeting us and saying yes, we are as lesbians and gays 
we are in the centre of society in the mainstream and these